Hey everybody, um, I felt led to get on here and share some things that God has put on my heart. And um, I'm just going to get right to the point. Today is Wednesday, January 20th, 2021. And um, I feel so optimistic today. I feel so positive today. And um, I want to tell you why. Because God is saying to me, that um, today is a day to get excited about because we are moving into a new season and this is a very exciting season now if you are going just by what you're reading in the news or if you're going just by what your emotions may have said to you when you woke up this morning you may miss this okay but don't miss this. Don't misinterpret what's really happening today. Okay. Um, we are moving into a new season that starts today. And I'm so excited about this because I started feel, sensing this last night. And when I woke up this morning, totally confirmed, totally confirmed by the Lord. This is a new season that we were entering into. Now, what does this season mean? Um, this is a season where we put on our shoes of authority. This is a season where we take up our scepter of authority. Our swords have been laid down. We are picking up our scepter now, and we are walking in that authority. And we have peace and joy. I can tell you right now, God is not sitting up in heaven wringing his hands over anything that's happening in the earth today, either in the earth or in the United States. He's not worried. He is happy. He is joyful. He's in a good mood. By the way, he's always in a good mood. And um, he's excited because we are entering into a season of um, just pure holy trust in him. And... Um, Part of the thing, what we've been walking through recently, and so many of you have felt this, um, we have been walking through a very, very difficult season of um, praying, interceding, warring, and um, doubting, questioning. And um, But God is taking us into a new season where we fully realize and understand that he has done it, that it is finished. Okay. Now I want to make a couple of distinctions here. Okay. Cause I know this is kind of a tough thing. Uh, I know some of you have seen prophetic words by Kat Kerr. Uh, for example, uh, eat cake, you know, it's time to celebrate. And you've seen other prophetic words from other ministers that say, um, we need to get in there. We need to pray. We need to intercede and all this kind of thing, you know? So, um, so which one of them is right? Is it done? Are we done? And we can just celebrate now. And the answer is like kind of a mixture of the two things. Okay. It is done and we can celebrate, but our role that we have right now is to walk in that authority, take that authority, lift up our scepter, and praise him, thanking him for what he's already done. Um, I know some of you have seen um, a recent interview on Sid Roth. I don't remember the gentleman's name, but he was talking about time travel. I know some people, some people are like, time travel? Oh, well, that only happens in the movies. That doesn't happen in real life. But if you go back and look at the Bible and see what happened to Hezekiah, you know, um, the Lord had told him that he was going to die. And he prayed. And the prophet came back and said, the Lord said, I'm giving you more time. And um, the, the I'm not quoting it directly because I don't, I don't have that scripture memorized. But anyway, God turned back time. God is in time everywhere. Okay. Um, he owns the timeline 
He can go anywhere that he wants in time. And for those of you that have had Sozo's done, for example, you know that um, you know that Jesus has come in and healed you of lies that you believed in the past. And you may have been shown a picture of something happening. It may have been you were four years old sitting in the on the floor in the living room of your house and you were feeling lonely and Jesus walks in and he gives you a teddy bear and he invites you to play a game with him. Well, that didn't actually happen in your history, but because he is present everywhere in the timeline, he can go in and take care of that. And that's one of those things that I always wondered about, you know, Lord, you're showing me for, for just as an example, something like that, you know, the teddy bear thing coming in. But, but Lord, that didn't actually happen. But when I saw this guy speaking on Sid Roth, you know, a week or two ago, and he was explaining about that, the timeline thing, now it makes sense, you know. So, um, we are, so again, we are entering into a very exciting new season with God. It's a season where we are going to stop worrying about things. And we are going to believe wholeheartedly, okay? And the other thing about this new season that we're stepping into is that we are actually um, taking stewardship and dominion um, of affecting the culture for the kingdom of God, okay? And... Um, we learned a very, very painful lesson through recent events of what happens when the church sits back and just waits for the rapture to come to rescue them from the mess that we're in. We learned a very painful lesson that we should have been praying. We should have been taking dominion. We should have been taking up our scepter. We should have been taking the authority that we have. Okay, I had to do this in two parts because I um, got interrupted by someone at the door. But yeah, so um, just to summarize, you know, this new season that we're moving into, we're laying down our swords, we're picking up our scepters, and we are believing and we are praising and we are joyful because God is joyful. Uh, one of the things that Kat Kerr has said that gave me the most hope, um, the question was asked of her, um, how would people feel if they could see what was really going on with heaven and with God and the angels and everything? And she said people would be a lot happier. And I believe it's because they would see the truth about what's really going on. They would realize how small the devil is. They would realize how powerless he is. And um, just like in the Bible, um, when... Uh, well, who was it, Elijah, that prayed that the guy's eyes would be open. And when his eyes were open, he saw the hills filled with chariots of fire. So, um, we walk by faith and not by sight. So, um, if you haven't already done this, I need to encourage you, stay away from mainstream news. Because you're not getting the truth there. Something interesting happened this past week. My daughter got this sudden urge to watch Newsies on Disney Plus. Uh, and it was a musical that came out in the movie theater in 1992. And then a Broadway version came out a few years ago as well. And both of those versions were on Disney Plus and we watched them. It was very interesting to see what was happening. It was based on the true story of these newspaper delivery boys that went up against the two big newspaper publishers in the day, um, Hearst and Pulitzer, you know. And um, there's a critical scene there between Pulitzer and the main character, Jack, who is the one who's leading all these newsies in their strike. And he basically tells them, you know, he's going to, shut down any article any any article about the strike or 
about what these newsies want, what their demands are, you know, um, he's going to shut it out of any newspaper in New York. And then he says this really critical line. He says, and if it's not in the papes, it never happened. If it's not in the papes, it never happened. Okay. So we cannot put our eyes on what the news is telling us because it's not telling us God's truth. Okay. There, there are two battles happening. There's one happening in the spirit. There's one happening in the natural. Okay. And the Bible even says that what we bind on earth is bound in heaven. What we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Okay. So the battle that we can't see with our natural eyes is a spiritual battle that's happening over our nation right now. Okay. And uh, one of the biggest weapons that the enemy has been using is communication. So he is trying to spread his lies. The Bible says he is the father of all lies. He's been spreading his lies through the media. Okay. So if you find yourself, and this is, here's the litmus test, people. If you find yourself feeling discouraged, pessimistic, um, not believing, then there's a good chance that the enemy has been able to use um, those lies against you, okay? And there may be people around you that are believing everything that the media is saying, and they are spreading that information to you as well. But stay encouraged, people. I am so encouraged because God is encouraged, you know? This is a day, January 20th, that so many people think, this is a day of mourning. This is a day of sadness. It is not. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. The Bible says to rejoice in the Lord always. So do we take a break from rejoicing because it's January 20th, 2021? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Okay. And I want to speak into one more thing. All right. We do not have a lot of experience in our generation, in our recent history in the world of really pressing in and waiting for a promise of God for a long period of time. Now we have a lot of biblical examples of this, okay? Abraham waited a long time for Isaac to come. His wife was old, way past menopause, okay? Um, Noah waited a long time, and I love Noah. I have a newfound appreciation and respect for Noah. He's one of the first people I want to talk to when I get to heaven. But Noah, over, what, 100 years building the ark and having people make fun of him. And we're worried about people making fun of us over a period of weeks leading up to an election. I mean, dozens of years, decades and decades, Noah being made fun of and criticized, probably feeling isolated at times, you know, and, but he believed God. He stood on the promise, even with no sign of rain. I believe my daughter was explaining to me that biblically speaking, there had never been rain on the earth before the flood. So imagine trying to believe that, okay? And um, one of my favorite prophetic people, Veronica West, she's a lady in Ireland, and um, the Lord has just been pouring out so much into her uh, regarding our nation. And she posted an amazing word this morning, and it speaks so much to what is going on in our country right now. And um, this is about um, Abraham and Isaac. We are at an Abraham and Isaac moment. And this is our time to put our Isaac on the altar. Okay? But we don't have to worry. Because there is a lamb in the thicket. It's coming, people. It's coming. And I posted a Bible verse last night. Um, I've been doing a read through the Bible in two years plan. And my plan has me in the book of Jeremiah. And uh, last night I was to read Jeremiah 17. And so much of what I was seeing in there was just speaking to our present situation. And um, 
one of the verses in there was talking about how a, you know, just as a partridge tries to hatch eggs that it did not lay, you know, so a man who achieves something through unjust gains, um, he will not live out all those days. He will be taken out after a number of days. So I want to ensure you all, just, God is a just God and he loves justice more than you or I ever possibly could. So I want to assure you that whatever in this country has been gotten through unjust means, it's not going to last, people. It's not going to last. So, but just remember, we have this juxtaposition, this new season that we're in. And I don't think it's necessarily that God is doing a new thing. It's just that he is bringing our hearts to a place of coming into an alignment with what he wants us to be doing, which is this juxtaposition of believing and taking our authority, celebrating and taking our authority. Okay, so we have our praise and we have the scepter at the same time. God bless you all.